that's, that's and if you it. grew up as a young boy in the 90s even if you are disgusted by the sight of her now you'll get a nostalgia boner you'll be like it's true oh my penis remembers <laughs> my penis remembers <laughs> It's like, it's like a dog who, like, when you move across country, but you couldn't take the dog, and the dog goes across country, like, never forgets you. That that That's your penis. Like, when it comes to Anna Nicole, it's like riding a bike, but with boobs. Oh, goody, goody, here it comes. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show. You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. <laughs> oh, my God, don't stop now. With your hosts, Brian, John, and Elaine. Welcome to the Cinema Psycho Show, the madhouse for film freaks and film fans of all types. I'm your host, Brian Coddington. Join my fellow co-hosts and filmmakers, John and Elaine Woolscraw. What up? Biggest titties I've ever seen. <laughs> are, you, are you talking about anything in particular, hon, or did you just oh. have a good day at the beach? Oh, they know what they're listening to. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Uh, so this one, I, I, I think I told you guys this on our. We, like we have a chat that we go through, um, you know, when we're planning out episodes. And I think I remember saying like, "This is really awkward having this movie that we're reviewing after the <laughs> last episode was all about strong female what, women." Whatever are you talking about, Brian? Whatever could you be oh, referring well, to? Well, we're on episode one ten. Yeah. And uh, this week we're that's, going to be. That's so funny because 110 was the weight of her boobs. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Each. John, John, whose boobs could we be talking about? Uh, I think it was that reality show star that tried to eat like cat poop before someone told her it wasn't Snickers. <laughs> oh, oh, come on. No, Anna, oh, that's cat poop. Come Listen, on. I'm, I'm not going to tolerate any of that. <laughs> there is a line. Yeah, I mean, she she ha- she was a very tragic figure. We were she talking was. about this beforehand, and she seemed like a, a fairly nice person, yeah. you know, as much as Hollywood would let her. But it just seemed like it kind of ruined her. Yeah, we're we're of course talking about Anna Nicole Smith, and this particular movie is part of our uh, mm. pantheon of utter shit. <laughs> and boy, oh boy, utter cat shit. Oh man, let's just go with that. And you know, this two was- big heaping piles <laughs> boob size piles if you will of of utter shit i mean spoonful <laughs> upon of spoonful that's a big pile of shit. Big pile really of shit. really bad you know and this is in a way like in honor of the rock skyscraper that yeah came out, which is also not getting good reviews but i guarantee by default it's better than this i thought it was making um, okay money though i mean uh, i know well, that those rock, two have nothing to do with each yeah. other but you know rock movies are bad reviews plus lots of money equals happy rock you know it's happy just, rock like yeah every one of his <laughs> movies are crap but they make a lot of money happy guys rock. bankable it's true and you know what's funny um his instagram is like a genuine delight <laughs> Like, I love following his, his Instagram. He's really positive. He will, I mean, he's actually kind of inspiring. Is this because you've been pushing our Instagram more? No, I I <laughs> should follow from to... our account, though. Um, No, he's just fun to, like, watch on, on Instagram. Um, He put up, like, a cool video of how he gave his, like, life, like his longtime stuntman, like, a brand new truck. That's nice. That's pretty cool, dude. The Rock was up at three in the morning, clanging and banging all day long. The Rock made himself some flapjacks. The Rock went on the Today Show, and now finally, The Rock has come back to the Psycho Show. That was wow. magical. I really enjoyed that. You, you forgot to do the. Did you smell all? <laughs> wow. What the rock is cooking. You guys like always bring it 110%. I oh, yeah. appreciate you both so much. So, well, that's all the time we have. Thank what? you guys for living. Oh, no, we haven't done anything yet. I'm no, sorry. no. I could do a whole episode well, on his cheat day posts. I really what, could. What's funny, what's funny is some might view that this particular episode might be somewhat of a uh, cash grab, if you will, or a uh, popularity grab, if you will, of. The Rocks movie, and it, it is. It's, Bro, yeah. it's it totally abs- that. It there, there's is. a term in marketing for, for this kind of thing. It's called riding the wave. Yeah, yeah we're, oh, not, we're not dummies. It's, it's totally is. Yeah, we're, it is. We're not going to lie to you. It's exactly what we're We're riding doing. that sweet, sweet SEO Look, into the sunset. Wanted, I We wanted to talk about this movie. Why wouldn't we do it now? <laughs> it's well, true. I didn't, I didn't even know this movie existed. Neither oh, did oh, I. Yeah. I blame oh. you for most okay, of my I knowledge, we, John. I guess I mean me. <laughs> You I blame tell you. us these terrible movies. I blame you mostly. You bring it upon us like a plague. 
There's locusts, frogs, and skyscraper. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. But but before we get to a little bit of that, uh, we, of course, have a news bit, and it's not without its share of controversy. Yeah. yeah we should really uh, chime in on this one here. Uh, James Gunn, I'm sure, as everybody knows by now, was, was booted by Disney, who, you know watch saves their ass every time they can without doing the right thing yeah because of uh some old like 10 year old tweets 10 year old tweets now a lot of people need to know is that uh james gunn worked for trauma and mm-hmm. what you know did a lot of independent films and he was kind of a shock jock at the time oh yeah anything he could to get a rise out of people and so you know he would write a lot of pedophile tweets and um you know tweets about dead animal you know whatever well, he he, he just, talked about a lot of ho- like the the tweets that that came to to uh surface um basically were were horrible i mean i'll be the first to say this yeah. the jokes were horrible they were not funny they no, uh, he had horrible things to say he said horrible things i'm well, not think, saying anything uh, uh, that's yeah. definitely true I think they fall under the purview of jokes simply because they have nowhere else to live. But I think they were just simply shock bait. Oh, absolutely. Like, they, well, they were designed specifically to shock, to offend, or arouse. And to offend. Yeah. yeah, and we're talking about tweets that occurred in 2008 to 2012. Yeah. right. So these are old tweets. Yeah. And, you know, I think we need to point out who the real enemy is here, not somebody who is apparently not very funny when he's not writing about space raccoons. The the real problem is Mike, and I don't know if it's Sarovich or Sarkovich or yeah, Karov, however the fuck you say his name, but he is one of these alt right Republicans who well, purposely trolls. yeah, who goes and finds anything remotely. This, this guy was the man behind Pizzagate. Yes, if you're not familiar with Pizzagate, Pizzagate was a uh, tinfoil hat conspiracy theory. It was crazy. That was thought up by this fuckface. <laughs> Wait, and and I'll did say, you say by this fuck face? Oh yeah, <laughs> thrown out by this fuck face. Amazing. Okay? Um, this fuck face. Okay, I'm not going to pronounce his name. He's Mister Fuck Face. Okay, this fuck face went ahead and and basically Mikey Fuck Knuckle. Mikey Fuck Knuckle. <laughs> uh, this guy basically brought up this whole PizzaGate thing where he he believed that somehow Hillary Clinton's campaign and the Democrats had some sort of child sexual pedophile bullshit, like uh, some a sort of demonic like, sex. Ring it was, it was in, a, yes, in the bottom of a pizza restaurant, in the bottom of a pizza restaurant. That's literally the, the conspiracy theory Which, here. And know, there are people out there who believe it. Well, guys, it's proof women get more done than guys. Like even on the campaign trail, she still had time to go and just cover herself in goat's blood and <laughs> sell children into sex slavery in a pizza restaurant. Oh yeah, and, absolutely. And made some pepperoni rolls. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's true. But yeah, no, he, yeah, he's Mr. the guy. Did yeah, that. he's the guy behind this, which also caused the Looney Tunes to go in with a gun and start shooting people. But, oh, yeah, you know, that's, that's and he's still allowed to just spew his venom. But the idea was that he purposely went and tried to dredge up the worst things he could find on him in order to take him down because James Gunn is oppositional to Donald Trump. Yeah. And that's that's where we're at in this time period. And here's the worst part about it. It, it worked. worked. Yeah. And the thing is now Disney is the kind of company that, look, the mouse is always going to come first, even if. We don't think like, oh, you know, you did anything too wrong. We're always going to cover our brand before we cover you. And you kind of know that going into working with Disney. Oh, yeah. But the problem is now they're like, okay, it worked. So now we're going to go after Patton Oswalt. We're going to go after Sarah Silverman. We're going to go after anybody who does any kind of shocking humor that challenges Trump to just try to destroy them. And if Disney doesn't rehire Trump. Or, you mean, sorry, yeah, uh, Disney doesn't rehire James Gunn. Oh, God, could you imagine? <laughs> Amazing. Gamora's going to wear skimpy outfits the entire time. Why are you a real boy, not a real girl? <laughs> so then you could pee on me. Um, but but yeah, if they don't rehire James Gunn, this is going to set a bad precedent that it's, you know, yeah, my, anybody that questions the authoritative, you know, system my, is going to fall. My concern about this is, is just as you said, that this is bigger than just the firing of James Gunn. This is mob mentality. OK, that's exactly what this is. This is called, um, you know, the, the public backlash being so visceral and just offer his head um, from one sector. Like there are people out there who are like, you have to take his tweets into context. 
You know, and I'm one of the people out there like, well, they were horrible. And they were horrible. I'm not going to sit here and say that they were great tweets and that was great. No, they were horrible, disgusting tweets. They weren't even funny. They were not even funny. But if you take a step back from the outrage, you know, you, there's stages of, of dealing with things. The first step is outrage. Okay. The second step is actually thinking. And the problem is, is that people aren't getting to that second step of thinking about this. They're just sticking with the outrage and letting the outrage control the outcome. Now, I personally would have thought it would have been okay if Disney said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to do an internal investigation on this, and we're going to look into this ourselves. That would have been the appropriate thing. That's what most businesses well, should do. You know, so Disney, congrats on discovering Twitter, but when this has been out in the world for this long, this also creates a really interesting dialogue that I think could also be quite frightening because, you know, um, we've heard a lot of hollow apologies from celebrities this year, but I, I don't know. I felt like there was something very sincere about what James Gunn had to say when he said, you know, whenever all this came out, he, he said, he apologized for the shit years ago. Too. Right. And then he even said again, like, I was trying to be provocative and I was just an asshole, like short of saying I was an asshole. Like he didn't say it in those words, but he said, you know, this was something that I tried. I thought this was me being edgy. I have come around full circle to realize that that wasn't even funny. <clears throat> so what we're saying now is that your own personal growth doesn't matter. Absolutely. And whatever vitriol you've spit out on Twitter, I mean, what when it follows you around digitally now for the rest of your life, unless you delete the tweets, and, and even if you do, you know, people can save them. They can be archived. I mean, nothing really ever dies on the internet. You know, where is the motivation to grow as a human being, to be a better person. Like, I feel like that's a big question where anything you do on the internet could bite you in the ass. So are we all just going to be like trollish assholes forever now? Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's a, a reverse consequence where, you know, I'm not saying he should be rewarded for anything. I mean, he's been helming a, a huge franchise with Guardians of the Galaxy. I feel like that's a pretty damn good life reward, mm -hmm. but I'm not, I, I don't think he should be docked for realizing that like he was a terrible person and not doing what he did anymore. Well, also the two, the thing too is like, you, you know, us three grew up in the age of the internet. I mean, how long have we been on the internet? Like I can remember my first time was on in 1999. So does that mean that the person I was in 1989 is somehow the same person I am now? Dude, I, I don't want to like, you know, scare you guys with my coolness, but I used to like work, be in Star Wars chat rooms. But that, but that's what I'm saying is yeah, you, now you don't even like Star Wars. I'm pretty awesome. No, <laughs> no. But, but my point is, is that just as we've grown as people since 1999 or whenever you guys actually mm -hmm. got on the internet and started messing yeah. around in chat rooms and shit like that, I mean... You, you, there has to be, as you said, Lane, there has to be room for understanding that people grow over time mm -hmm. and you cannot continually judge a person for something that they said 10 years ago. Well, well too, I well, just especially uh, sorry, sorry yeah. you can go, John. I, yeah. I have another point that I would like to make. <laughs> I'm very fire, fired up fired about up here, it. Yeah. No, well, especially a comedian. You know, the thing is. And that's you're, what people gonna, forget is that he was a yeah. comedian at that you're time. You're going to try out a lot of things and, and some aren't going to hit. And honestly, if it was just like a joke that wasn't funny or a little bit offensive, just got you fired. I would have been off the show by episode three. You know, it's, <laughs> you know, and well, a lot of people are undeservingly comparing this to the thing about Roseanne. And here's the big no, difference. that's the difference here. Here is the simple difference. Writing a pedophile joke doesn't make you a pedophile. Writing a racist joke makes you a racist. It's I mean, Dahlia? it's true. And Roseanne is racist. James Gunn is not a pedophile. Yeah, that's the simple well, difference. Well, too, I just feel like this um, censorship is just so arbitrary because it just depends on what media outlet you're doing. Because you guys saw that Alex Jones's podcast is on Spotify, right? Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. I'm pissed. That's like the only thing a month that I like yeah. pay for and it usually is like the best $10 well, he, I spend all month. I, I I would not be surprised if you start to see his podcast disappear. Well, I mean they've they've taken down a few episodes that do contain hate speech, but I don't understand how Spotify did this agreement anyway. Even YouTube won't work with the guy. So it well, just seems Well, that's like this... what I'm saying is is the man himself is starting to slowly lose those footholds because the companies are realizing 
uh, what type of, of person he is. It's just ridiculous, though, because, I mean, it just it just recently I saw this uh-huh. week that his podcast was on. And then just today I saw that, you know, several of the episodes have been taken down, mm-hmm. but you can still hear other ones yeah. on Spotify. I mean, we're on Spotify. You yes. know, this show is on Spotify as well. And I, it just seems like the censorship is so arbitrary from medium, like, entity, like, mm-hmm. juggernaut to juggernaut because... You know, Disney's fired James Gunn for something he did 10 years ago, and yet Alex Jones is fine to just spew the, the his press, bullshit what did he even on do? Spotify. What did he do? He made some nasty tweets. Who? He keeps saying that he was fired for something he did. What did he do? What, James Gunn? Yeah. Well, he's fired for the tweets he wrote. Yeah. Basically. That's, that was that's it. That's what they're citing. I'm not saying that's right, but I'm saying that's why. The- so, non-hate speech... You know, the words that technically didn't hurt anybody. I mean, you could have been triggered, I suppose, if yeah. you were some kind of and victim. I mean, but what did he The really pedophilia do? stuff is really fucked up. I mean, it's really fucked up. That's what I'm saying. It's it's fucked I've up pedophilia tweets. jokes before. Like, it's, you know, you, you try to shock and awe. And sometimes you hit it out of the park. And then sometimes people can go, Ugh, you know, and you're, well, okay, let's not do you, that again. You know what I'm always you know? th- always reminded of? Um, one of my absolute favorite comedians is George Carlin. Yeah. George Carlin, absolutely one of the best comedians uh, that that I re- always recommend, and his jokes constantly were towing the line or just crossing that line into vulgarity and absurdity. And there was one that he was—I always crack up when I hear it—where uh, he talks about how he hates uh, the the people who put. Uh, this is on his complaints and grievances special that he did on HBO. Yeah. Um, and he talks about how he hates it when people put their children on their outgoing messages. Like, this is back in the day when you had, like, you know, message a machine. Right. And he, <laughs> he, he, he ends the joke by saying, uh, like, it's a serial killer that's on the phone. And he's like, hello, Peter. <laughs> I'm going to kill mommy and daddy. <laughs> I'm going to take their skin and put it in a funny hat. And I'm going to spick, take my j- big giant ding dong and pick it in your beep. <laughs> you know, that is a horrible joke. But it's funny. And we seem to believe that, well, if you're a comedian like that, that it's okay. But someone like James Gunn, who now is a filmmaker and is someone who grew up in the trauma sphere, that. Well, he's not a comedian now. He can't be making tweets like that. He can't be making jokes like that uh, because they, they're across the line. Like, that's the problem I have is that certain comedians who do do this shit, no problem. But someone like that, nope, can't do it. Well, I mean, I, I think that's a tough line to walk because, I mean, you're comparing James Gunn uh, to, to, you know, Carlin, who's one of the greatest that ever lived. I mean, but you know, his stuff was controversial. His stuff it was, was very but vulgar. it was also funny. Yeah. And oh, well, no, James I'm not, Gunn wasn't funny. No, I'm not saying that any of his stuff was funny. I still say, I still say what I meant. His tweets were vulgar. His tweets were not funny. They were right. disgusting. Right. Um, but they were ten years old. That and that's what really pisses me off. Like I said, he's a completely different and person he's now. Apologized for them a de- already, and he already recognized their wrongness. Yes. A, you know, and they're a decade later. So yeah, I, I think it's it sets a dangerous precedent. Um, you know, despite the the fact that it, like. Uh, the whole cast basically was like Disney rehire him. It doesn't look like he is going to be rehired really? um, because I mean, short of Chris Pratt and Zoe Saldana, like they all said it, they almost quit. I mean, they stopped short of quitting. They but... almost did. They didn't have the fucking balls to actually do it. Ooh. Well, they are also Spicy. under contract that they would be. They, know. they, their lawyers could let them sneak out of that. Right. I... He could go make a few more shitty ass dinosaur movies. That's true. You know? That's true. <laughs> And another movie where he rapes Jennifer Lawrence in space. Aww. Look in the archives <laughs> of this show. I just it's just uh, ridiculous though because like, you know, they got like a I'm I'm looking at Variety's article on the matter and it just said, you know, a person close to the decision I don't see Disney rehiring him. Those tweets were so horrible, and Disney has a different standard than other studios. Where the fuck oh, have you bullshit. been for the whole time? Wait, like they existed his whole time, Disney. Lane. You mentioned, or uh, in Disney my, has Brian, a different standard. Fuck you, yeah. Disney. But they existed oh, this God. whole time, and you just yeah. noticed them no, now. No, guys, I'm not sure which one of you guys said it, but they vetted. They didn't just vet him now, like in the investigation. Yeah. Brian, you mentioned investigation. They did it when they hired him. You know what you're doing? You hired the guy who made Super. Exactly. You no, know, uh, that or was Slither. a violent. Yeah, disturbingly sexual movie. Like you knew it. They knew exactly who you he knew. was. You and you then, saw the man's resume, didn't you? You saw he worked for Troma. Yeah, and they didn't give a shit until 
they looked bad. And that's exactly what these trolls, like Mikey Fuckknuckle, count on. <laughs> I'm glad you brought it back. <laughs> I am glad yeah. you brought it back. You know, it was like, take take the fame and the money out of this. Like, If I didn't like somebody who got a job at work at Brugger's Bagels, who was a former convict or something who was trying to turn his life around, and I'm wearing my MAGA hat, and you know I don't like that he's saying shit about Trump, and I go in and just put up this big fuss, like, oh, have you seen what he's written, or do you know what he did? Like, I will never eat here again. I don't think anybody should ever eat here because you hired him, and what's wrong with you? He's like a human piece of filth, and they go, oh, crap, we don't want the customers being mad at us, and they fire him, and I just have this petty, disgusting victory. But... Just take that Brugger's example and now put it on this level. It's easy to get distracted because James Gunn is so famous and he's going to be fine. Like he's still going to oh, yeah. be rich. He, you know, it's yeah. he's going to be fine. He'll, he'll he'll be able to make but movies. The bigger issue here is that you'll never again, unless you somehow are squeaky clean. And if you are in any way an entertainer or comedian, that's Im- nearly impossible uh, to ever question authority again, because those connected with authority will dig and dig and dig until they destroy you. Mm-hmm. And then we're in we're in 1984. Very, and, very true. Yeah, and it's, it's a shame. That it's, it's a shame. It's not Paramount or Fox or somebody, you else know, who would have the balls to rehire he, him. But he, Disney wants those white gloves that Mickey wears to stay spotless, which, by the way, Disney, that it goes back to old vaudeville blackface routines. Yeah, so Mickey's racist. Yeah. yeah you know what? Let, let's let's even di- dive in a little deeper here. Uh, Walt Disney was an anti-Semitic bastard. He, he also was. hated women and okay. blacks. And so, so, you yeah, know, just, Disney wants to be squeaky clean. Look at your fucking founder. Your fucking founder was an, was a Nazi sympathizer okay I mean, him and henry ford were buddies they liked the nazis everyone's favorite ride in the magic <laughs> kingdom is based on a song about a slave singing about how much yeah. he enjoyed being a slave splash lagoon yeah oh god Zippity well guys i mean look at their business practices speaking of the rides i mean i feel like i've mentioned this a surprising amount of frequency on this podcast but like something like three quarters of disney employees like the ones that work in the parks cannot afford basic necessities and a quarter of them are homeless yeah. They cannot afford to live. But James Gunn's nasty tweets. I mean, this is the standard we have to set. I mean, you guys are, you know, great job, Disney. Great You're job, really Disney. focusing on what's important. I, I, I would say the only hope we have is that the next time that this shit happens, that we as a society take a step back and say, should we really act like a mob with pitchforks and fire or should we maybe just try to understand what's going on. What's the bigger picture? Or just know the difference between somebody who did something idiotic and someone who's actually harmful. Like, guys, please go write Spotify and be yeah. like, take down Alex Jones. I mean, that guy acted like Sandy Hook didn't yeah. exist. He's a fucking monster. Any any person who says, well, he's horrible, blah, 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 uh, you know, ask yourself this question. And I, and I will end this on this. Have you ever said anything nasty, or provocative or that you regretted or that you regretted on the internet ever the end if you can sit there and sit on your high horse and say you haven't you're a fucking liar yeah because we've all been a little bit shitty to everybody amazon has. when our order was wrong okay guys. everybody's been a little bit mean <laughs> guys everybody who works on guardians of the galaxy is fighting for james gunn to come back Nobody who works on Roseanne is fighting for Roseanne. They openly condemned her like immediately. It was actually stunning how fast they condemned her. Well, we could talk all day about James. We We just did. did. Yeah, seriously. I love talking to you guys about like this stuff. But we got some uh, fun shit to talk about here. Oh, my fun. Pantheon of utter shit. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah. Skyscraper from 1996. Bravo, Charlie. Wait, what was her? Oh, Helicopter. Roger, Roger, Bravo, Charlie, Roger 84 or something like that. No, it was like something. Oh, I can't believe I even I even like watched it because I don't remember. It just left my brain immediately. I just knew it was Die Hard with titties. Yeah. Well, Die Hard with bare titties. Well, no, so, it was. If people are well, into that. Guys, under Siege was Die Hard on a boat. <laughs> uh, Speed was Die Hard on a bus. Yes. This was. Just die, die hard. hard in Die Hard. Yeah, yes. it's just fucking Die Hard again. It's like, what about Die Hard in a skyscraper? That is Die Hard, you idiot. <laughs> well, we could put well, tits in it. Well, yeah. So, so Die Hard on a boat, yeah. Die Hard on a bus, and Die Hard with double D's. Oh, You're that's welcome. great. 
You're welcome. That should have be been the hard. tagline. I'll tell right you there. what, though. I mean, I I would like to see her in some like more supportive undergarments because those are large. I was gonna say like she has back problems or oh, had back problems. Man. I'm sure. I guess we. I mean. People probably know mostly about Anna Nicole Smith. I mean, she's kind of a, a fascinatingly tragic figure. She is. Um, she passed away. 2007. Yeah. Well, I was going to say it has to be 11 years ago because yep. her daughter's 11 now. Yep. And her daughter was just a baby at the it time. It was shortly after her daughter was born. Mm-hmm. It was because her, her daughter was extremely young. And, well, what had happened was uh, her son, uh, I think, overdosed. I think so. Like he they was both, the little kid in the movie. He was the little. Kid he in the was, movie. They, yeah. and they both died in the Bahamas, right? They did. Well, the the son had died had died first, and it was roughly a few days later that Anne Nicole had died. Yeah, it was. That yeah. was strange that they died so close. Together. And then there was a massive custody battle between uh, Anne Nicole's lawyer uh, and uh, the the father of mm-hmm. uh, her daughter, and. I just remember from that time that it just being really nasty. I mean, it was like it was on Inside Edition like every night. It was very <laughs> oh, intense. Inside Edition, I remember. Yeah. Um, it's still, with, is that with still Deborah on? Norville. Yeah, it's still on. Yeah. Is that with Mario Lopez or is that extra? That's, That's extra. extra. Okay. Deborah but, Norville yeah. is Inside Edition. Yeah. Guys, yeah, Anna um, Nicole was the trashier Pam Anderson. She yes. well, she was famous for her marriage to uh, J. Howard Marshall, right? Yes. So he was like a billionaire because of his stake in Coke Industries. Yep. And, you know, I mean, it was a weird marriage. Like, he was just this, like, you know, very infirm-looking old man. Um, And she was, you know, this, like, blonde, like, seemingly happy, you know, playboy, basically. Well, she she was, I believe she was a stripper first. Yeah, that's where she met him. Yeah, she met him at a club, yeah. And then became a playmate. And I think, wasn't she uh, the one behind Guest Jeans? Yeah. For a while. Yep, she was with She did some modeling, right? She did some modeling um, and then kind of forayed into acting with, like, I remember seeing her Well, she started in in Playboy first. I mean, she was in Playboy like that. We're talking like 92. Yeah. But but she then got into uh, acting with uh, Naked Gun 33 and a third. Well, she isn't terrible. She's not terrible in that. She actually has somewhat decent comic timing now her acting in this movie oh my god well i mean you gotta talk to you gotta talk about like a director you know what i mean like it's not all just the actor yeah (laughs) you know like if she was good in one movie and not another like then one of them's a good director you know yeah i think to a degree she had to know that what she was signing on for wasn't like anything of too much value and she knew that she was in it for her body because there's a shower scene a sex scene another sex scene and a rape scene which the rape scene is only in there so you can see her boobies. And boy, we, and who gets off to that? Like, oh, well, I'll just ignore the rape. And look we, at the we need to un- unpack that for sure. We'll, we'll get there. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well the, the one thing I did want to bring up is this is the kind of movie um, that would be on Cinemax before porn. Like before the softcore porn. Like before your your Beverly Hills Bordello and this, your Femme Fatale. This and, wasn't the most expensive softcore porn ever made. No, <laughs> it might have been. No, guys, like no, you that's, guys, that's pirates. You guys know this was direct to video, right? Oh yeah, this is yeah. direct to video. Like this did not appear in theaters. Like I want to be clear about. No, that. there. This was not on theaters. There was no way this would be in theaters. No, but uh, th- this was basically that that high. I I say this in quotes. No one could see this. The high quality softcore porn that would be on before the real. Real stuff, yeah. You know, well, like this this would be your 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 ten thirty uh, fair. You know, well, guys, was on a Thursday this, night? Did they make this as a vehicle for Anna Nicole Smith, or do you think some guy wrote a script and he said, "Idiot, this is just Die Hard. We can't I, we can't position as anything else." But said, "Well, what if we get like a hot chick with big balloons?" And well, in? well, I, no, because so in ninety five. She was into the limit, and that was yes. like the first time she ever starred in anything. But um, you know, even though made by the same director, it had, yeah, it had a lot of money and it had a lot going for it. Like her performance was so bad that it didn't make any money, and the critics hated it. Yeah, so that was like her only mainstream, you know, leading lady role. And so you know, the studios kind of figured out like, okay, well, she's like popular publicly, but this isn't translating to the screen. She's not a money maker, so all she really did. Um, was she appeared in a pilot episode of The Naked Truth, but then she was probably offered this, and even though it wasn't great, she probably took it. I don't think that's the case. I, I personally think that she wanted to do action movies. Um, I think she wanted to foray into something more than just titties. Interesting. I think she, I think she knew that, mainly because 
I I had I had watched an interview with the director of this movie and to the limit. His name is Raymond uh, Martino. Oh, okay. And I'm not familiar he, with him. He had said it, it was basically like a an excerpt from a documentary. So he was uh, kind of like if Rocky and Polly merged together, right? Kinda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But he basically said that you know she wanted to try to foray into acting and and really you know had a. a uh, a desire to do more more action stuff. So I think that's kind of where this co- sort of thing happened, but it just obviously execution just was not there. Well, it's a shame because you're told, like, you you should go legit, toots. You know, you got to become an actress, become legit. Like, sex work is so stigmatized. Like, she could have made a fortune just being a stripper and in Playboy and, and doing modeling. Well, she did. You know, but she didn't need to be an actress because, well, she wasn't one. You're fucking horrible. Yeah, but you know, it's but like... But she's told you gotta go into acting. Well, yeah. too, I mean, it's that American dream of like, you know, I think her her kind of strange obsession with Marilyn Monroe is like almost chilling oh at God. this point. It's kind of creepy. I mean, it makes its way into the film even, in but in real movie. life, I think she was also obsessed with Marilyn Monroe. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, what a what an interesting parallel to take because, you know, her, her life was just as tragic almost, you know, mm-hmm. it's so strange. Well, do we want to dive into the... the- the plot <laughs> sure. of this movie. All right. Well, after we get a series of um, stock footage of uh, helicopters flying, <laughs> um, we join the most baffling military weapon exchange I've ever you're, fucking seen. Well, you're missing a couple things here. Oh. You're missing the name of the helicopter company that she works for, Heliscort. Like, oh, yeah, because charming. she's an escort. Itself. She's an escort. <laughs> get it? So funny. You know? But, yes, we, we do get that very weird, bizarre military exchange thing in a back alley. So let, let me paint this picture for you, <laughs> dear audience. Let's do it. Um, we don't know who either people are on either side. They open the briefcase. And now we always make fun of exposition on this show. But yeah. I could have really used them to know what that Atari <laughs> looking fucking thing was. <laughs> Uh, but and then a beer truck comes and they're unloading and there's a van of other people and there's a guy on a rooftop and all of a sudden everybody starts shooting at everybody well, else and a rocket launcher goes off <laughs> and somebody has the bomb but you think they're with the guys that are out shooting with the the beer truck but they're shooting at them and everyone dies except the main main villain and I just like, what the fuck is happening. <laughs> Oh well, the best part is here. You, I'm gonna I'm gonna back up a little bit. Okay, okay, because that's a lot to unpack. <laughs> help me, help me okay. unpack this. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the the company is, is that I guess that's the, like the main like company that you're dealing with in this whole movie is a place called Zytek or Zitex. Like I, I looked up, I was like Zitex. Oh, you know? it's like an acne cream. like acne cream. Absolutely. Um, and they don't tell you what the fuck this thing is through the entire movie. Like, what this technology is. Just say, uh, it's not every day that you hold something that could change the balance of power in the world. What the fuck does that mean? No. Mm, is it a bomb? Is no it anthrax? Idea. It's an Apple II and an Atari, like, yes. glued into a yes. briefcase. Yes, and And yes, as you said, uh, this group of terrorists basically disrupt this already shady exchange of, of uh, technology... Between the military, like a U.S. government guy, and this Zytec corporation. And yeah, rocket launchers are shot over the place. Explosions happens. And one guy falls from a roof. That's it. Yeah. That's literally it. And at no point do you have any (laughs) idea what's going on. No, you don't know what the fuck's going on. It's very confusing because, too, like, uh, my favorite part of the IMDb page is, like, the goofs page. Um, (laughs) So, like, you don't know who's on what side, like... They only use one helicopter throughout the whole film, so you can't tell if it's like her helicopter or like the cop helicopter. Like they they obviously had no budget, so they weren't able to delineate things that they should have delineated. Also, very funny thing. This is a little thing that I saw watching this. I was like, that makes no sense whatsoever. One, Anna Nicole Smith drops off the main guy on the roof of a building. Very tall skyscraper mm-hmm. building. Mm-hmm. The guy then goes to the bottom of the building and catches a car to meet with the military the the Zytec guy. I why would yeah. you wh- huh? why 
would you need a helicopter to take you to the skyscraper so that you can get to the bottom fucking floor and go somewhere else? I can't imagine this business makes <gasps> much sense. Like, oh, hey, Jim, you almost here? Yeah, I'm landing on the fucking roof. Yeah, that seems hey, convenient. Hey, could you take a cab? Like, I'm, I'm on the ground level to meet you when you get here in a car yeah. like a normal person. I- You're on the fucking <laughs> roof? I listen. I I know Uber and Lyft didn't exist at this time, <laughs> but there were taxis. Yeah, it's Los Angeles. There's taxis everywhere. Okay, I think there's even like a subway system yeah. probably there. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they got earthquakes. Probably I think not. that's why the interstates are probably not so intense. Probably yeah, not because there is no earthquakes. Um, but yeah, but then we um we get to the first sensual shower of the movie. Oh yes, after this, yeah, where Anna gets off work and assigns to um bathe herself slowly. She doesn't know how to shower. She's well, not no. very good at it. She's not good at the showering. Like, like it, it looks like she's trying to make it sexy, but it isn't. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like well, when she, you're trying to pretend to do it sexy. Well, when you're not, not a, yeah, when you're not a very good actress, and like, you know, there's something that's like very organic about being sexy, and it's so manufactured that she just seems kind of gassy. <laughs> well, could you guys? Could you be sexy with 25 people on set? And some guy with a with a shirt unbuttoned to his belly button and twenty rings on his fingers. Come on, get that water over them tits. Come on, what's where the money's at? The hey, nipples ain't hard enough. I'm not saying <laughs> the acting isn't hard. I'm just saying she's not good at it. I, well, well, her well, nipples were though. Um, <laughs> they weren't though. That's no, the problem weren't. with fake boobs. Yeah. Like your your nipples get weird. It's a thing, and that's okay. Like it's not like a bad thing, but. Your nipples don't usually get as hard after the fact. Yeah, it looks like you have embarrassed Mickey Rooney. On Those are kids. weird things that I know right now. Or that are just really big, like you know, slices of pepperoni. But her boyfriend. Um, oh, that's her. That's her husband. A husband, excuse me, joins her in the shower, and then it leads to the first softcore sexy time scene. Where I don't think I don't know if he knows where a <laughs> vagina is. Oh no, that's that right there. That is classic softcore porn right there. Yeah. That is where you're literally fucking the belly button. Well, That's the whole it, damn thing. It, it gets you out of so trouble. Bad. That's my only theory is that like, come on, guys. We're, we can't give us an X rating. Look, he's not even anywhere near her vagina. <laughs> yeah. I, I really think it's a, just but, a get out of jail. No, that's that's, that's that's yeah. classic softcore porn. Yeah. Classic I do think it's, it's also the inspiration for every Tommy Wiseau sex scene. I'll tell you what. This movie had me yearning for the room. That is like a super <laughs> echelon of hell <laughs> when you want me to uh, be watching Tommy Wiseau's naked ass. Well, like When that's preferable. It, it was just funny no. because like every one of these sex scenes, it just seems so forced. Like I kept thinking, oh, yeah. like I kept thinking, like oh well, maybe maybe like Anna Cole had an affair with this guy or something like that. No, no, because it's just so wooden, and the shots are all just like a hand and on a hand on a thigh. Like it looks like uh, something that um, <laughs> bring this up, uh, like a sex scene that I directed when I was in grad school. I did I, my, my thesis film. I have a scene in there where I do have like simulated sex, and I know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> and it looks like that. It looks like someone who didn't know what the fuck they were doing and didn't know how to direct actors to make it look like they knew what the fuck they were doing. So that's exactly what it looks like. Well, yeah, I, but guys, if you see this movie, you, you go to a video store, and young people, if you don't know what that is, go fuck yourself. Um, <laughs> go you guys are so store. old. You guys are but, so rude. But if you go to the video store, and you see this box cover, you're not going to rent the movie because there's a skyscraper on it. You're renting it for the chick with the big titties. You're renting it for and the two big skyscrapers. How dare you? <laughs> yeah, two peaks. <laughs> two peaks. Um, and that's the only reason you're renting it, and you because you want to see her shower, and you want to see her, like someone to make love with her navel because you just want to see her boobs and ass and that i mean so yeah they do seem forced but it's because they are but that's the whole reason this movie was well not the whole reason it was made but the whole reason it was made to make profit yeah let's get her in here so we can get some boobs and then we'll get you know people to to watch our movie But then she finally has a couple lines of dialogue. Oh, God. And it's like, oh, why are you leaving? I want to have a baby. Oh. I want to have a baby. Yeah, they try to make that a plot point where she wants children. And the only reason why her partner doesn't is because the world is too messed up. Okay. <laughs> and like. I have. Okay, Lane. I have. I have multiple things about this scene. Oh, God. Do I get to do my Anna Nicole Smith imitation eventually? Yes. No, then, please do it now. Please do it now. 
Well, excuse me for still believing in Sunday walks in the park and little babies. You're welcome. Uh, it you was, you bastards the are welcome. Down, but there was not enough whining, and you were too competent in your delivery. I, I didn't you sound also, like you. you also were not in uh, bra and panties doing it. <laughs> Thankfully. Okay. But you, okay. the, the listeners don't know. Okay. I could be zero so, pants right now. He's going to Pound Town. <laughs> He gets his beeper goes off, which, you know, I mean, actually, cops and doctors still actually have these like, right. to this day. So but his beeper goes off and he goes, oh, shit, I guess we'll have I to told them not to chance. call me. Yeah. And the thing is, like, every guy would just like start like just going to like like Tasmanian pounding just to finish up. <laughs> he wouldn't just pull out and be like, well, I guess I'll just wipe this off. Save this one for later. Oh, no. like, oh better no. finish. No. You know, that's okay, so, not a thing. So first, like, he would have finished. Secondly, she gets mad at him for getting called into the job that he does all the time. And hey, penthouses with Marilyn Monroe all over the place aren't going to pay for that themselves. <laughs> it's true. And she like is mad because he didn't inseminate her. But apparently, they've not had this conversation, and he doesn't want to have children. And I can't imagine this is the first time this conversation has happened. And why are her panties so fucking high? That was a thing. Oh, that that's just a, the nineties. That was the nineties. I was like, okay, this is just this is just so bizarre. That that's was just the how 90s. the nineties were, man. I mean, feel bad for me. Like that was like and my then, options. Like back in those days, if I'd been her age, I would have had to wear that shit. And then she gets all fucking pissed off at him, mostly because he has to go to work. And then she drives like a maniac in her helicopter to prove some kind of point. Like she could lose her license acting like an asshole, being like, how dare you not ejaculate me and I give think, me babies? I think he didn't want to give her a baby because she's crazy. Because she is a baby, mentally. Because she's crazy. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> the the way that they present it is just so one note. You know, we were talking about strong women in film last week. and Two weeks um, ago. Or last time, I guess I should say. Last yeah. time. Um but, um, you know, we're talking about how there's so many things that derail a positive female character. And I mean, this is this is all of it. Like this is, you know, a very expected want. And I'm not saying that a woman that wants children shouldn't want that. But, you know, when you're given the same dialogue over and over again in Hollywood, like it's stale, it's old, you know, it's a it's a trope, you know. Yeah. Well, it, it also in no way pays off. Like, at least let it pay off, which it, it in no way does. Well, she kind of cares for that child a little. Her real so. kid. <laughs> yeah, her kid in the real world. Yeah. Which I thought, oh, maybe they'll adopt that kid because his mom died. Like, and I know I'm jumping a lot ahead in this movie, but his mom is a secretary who they shoot later in the movie because she has the same kind of hair as Anna Nicole. Yeah. And she's she's fucking dead. What? Well, but well, at the end of the movie, the end she's of the movie, fine. Yeah, they're like, oh, you can ride in the ambulance with your mom. She just got a flesh wound, kid. Like, last minute, in they decide. Brain. No. Yeah, <laughs> they decide that, oh, his mom's still alive. Like, wouldn't it have made a lot of sense? Like, oh, that poor little boy is going to have to go into a foster home. Hey, we'll babe, adopt why don't we adopt him? Really? Yeah. <laughs> you mean it, babe? The world's messed up. I mean it. I said it earlier. But maybe we can make the world a little <laughs> less messed up for this little guy. Dude, you oh, just God. wrote a better movie than the movie itself. <laughs> yeah. Congrats. How do so, you feel? Yeah. So so after that scene, we do yeah. get that crazy fly around thing. Um, and then we kind of cut to uh, obligatory police station. <laughs> Which is clearly <laughs> With, whatever so skyscraper. Hard nosed captain. <laughs> whatever skyscraper they filmed in, this is just one of the floors. And well, they just put oh. a couple police hats around and <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> obligatory police world's station. World's best cop coffee mug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Because I guess they uh, somehow like they captured like one guy from the Zytec building. Yeah, yeah, and they're interrogating him. Which I always hate this in movies when the cop like jacks the guy up against the wall and starts like kneeing him in the gut with his like leg. Like you're gonna get sued. It's like this they, is police brutality. I was like they 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 have lawyers. Like <laughs> and there's not even that much to provoke. He him. has rights. He's like. Yeah, you gonna tell us what we want? Yeah, not till I talk to my lawyer. You motherfucker! <laughs> just kicks his ass. He asked for his lawyer. You know, it's, it's like um, there was he has no, a right to that. I think this guy has an aggression problem. There's no build up to that at all. Well, he did just get get done having sex with his wife. So I mean, there is that. Oh no, that's why he's got he's got blue balls. <laughs> yeah, you know? he, he didn't nut. That's he why he's nut. so crabby. That's exactly it. He's like, God damn it! There I was no nutting. Nut. I mean, even if you don't want to use like your wife as some kind of like emergency mule like. 
I don't know. <laughs> you don't um, know where you're going with that. Yeah. Oh my. Like, oh my. He, he would have gone to the sink and just pressure rubbed. You know. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I got a little on your toothbrush, babe. <laughs> I love bro. that you like jackhammered your hand, even though no one but us can see you. <laughs> this is another episode of Things You Can't See Us Do Because We're an Audio Podcast. <laughs> What's that? You got a little on my toothbrush? Time for a baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not really how that works, yeah. babe. Oh, gross. So, so this happens, and then I guess one of the uh, goons, the lady goon, comes in while I guess... Uh, the the cop uh, detective goes out to investigate some shit. She's every '90s lady goon in yes. the movie. Yes, leather, lots of leather, like greasy, wet back hair. Yes, Spawn, Die Hard with a Vengeance. These are yep. two that just pop into my head yes. immediately, and and, and <laughs> very much just like doesn't have any lines. Mila, and well, just she she was the hero, sexy mute. Well, she was the hero, but not the goon. But Mila Jovovich in every Resident Evil movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know this is yeah. a- but but the sexy goon goes and uh kills this guy uh to g- get rid of loose ends. Um yeah. and then we're kind of introduced to uh our villains. Like we get kind of <laughs> our introduced to our villains <laughs> oh, because this guy. because uh Anna this Nicole asshole. Anna Nicole being uh a helicopter escort um is actually escorting the villains to the skyscraper. I don't yeah. understand. I mean, does this place not have background checks for like the no. people? So I mean, this is like a helicopter Uber kind. Yes, of. Yeah. exactly. And they they tell her, "Oh, this is a VIP," and it's like, okay, a VIP like of evil, a VIP of evil, exactly. VIP so, evil. Uh, she picks up uh, the the main leader, whose name is Fairfax. <laughs> yeah, and Fairfax is like if someone wrote Hans Gruber. And they were five. Yeah. Well, and two, like Fairfax, like that's <laughs> like the name you blind. put. And deaf and blind. And had no hands when they were at the typewriter. And they had only been given like remedial Shakespeare. You know? Well, they got the quote wrong. He says it's from the wrong. Yeah. He, he quotes the wrong play at one point. Well, guys, he has 175 IQ. <laughs> Which oh my I, god, that was some bullshit. I, like, up, I it, actually got angry at that point, and I was like, we're fucking looking this I shit up. I looked up genius IQs, and yeah. there are varying levels of genius. Like, yeah. When you get to genius, that's not just it. Like, There's yeah. like super genius, hyper genius. Baby genius. And there's one that said like un, un, unchecked un, genius or something. Yeah. Like something ominous Unrecordable sounding. genius. And unrecordable genius is about 185 and up. And he's at, apparently at 175. So he's smarter than Einstein. He's yeah, smarter Einstein than was, Tesla. Yeah, they were both he's, in like 172, I think. Yeah, yeah he's That's the bullshit. smartest man who's ever lived. But that okay. was the part that made me so mad. I was like, nah. I was like, <laughs> I accept the titties. I accept the bad dialogue. I was like, but no, this fucking IQ hey, bullshit. I'm Googling it. If he was smarter, then he would have acted better. <laughs> yeah. You know what's crazy, though? Like, that was, I mean, I, I know we've kind of jumped all over the place, guys, and I apologize for that. But I would say the biggest fail in this uh, film for me was the dialogue. Oh, God. It was not how people talk. It didn't even sound good. Like even if you know, because sometimes you see a movie and you're like, mm, that's not really how people talk. Like AKA every Joss Whedon film ever. But like you know, it's not how people talk. At but least it's that's still, clever. <laughs> but it still sounds good because it's right. clever. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it sounds like pleasing. It's like funny or you know enjoyable. But like this isn't how people talk. But like it also it just seemed like. A very like simple person wrote this yeah. because it just there was nothing to the dialogue other than getting us from point A to point B mm-hmm. and not even very well. It's like those translations of old kung fu movies. Like, ah. Something just gets lost in translation. I will make for your life to not have and for you to not have any longer. Right. It's like, oh, something got lost in translation. There, yeah, I you mean know? that's like a big thing too. You know. Um, for any like writing that that I do, or if I'm around anyone who who know wants to bounce something off of me, like read your dialogue out loud, like before Absolutely. it goes any further, because I mean <clears throat> you'd be surprised at how bad it sounds. Well, well, it, getting back to the plot, <laughs> I can't believe this is. It. I'm, tr- I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to get through this, guys. I'm trying to get on the plot I know, here. We're, we're trying to so, help. I'm so sorry. Uh, Anna Nicole Smith. Her, her name's Carrie, by the way. Carrie yeah, Wink. Carrie Wink. Okay, and she's she's transporting Fairfax and his. Uh, f- fake French assistant Jacques. Well, I thought her name was Gland. No, Mamory Gland. No. Oh, that comes from a long line of memory. Uh, <laughs> You're the worst. You are terrible, as always. Um, to the Zytec <laughs> building, and what happens at the Zytec building is is Fairfax's goons, and these are like, oh, 
pristine 90s goons here. Well, one of them is like Glacier from American oh, Gladiator. Oh, he, he's Discount. <laughs> are you talking about Discount Fabio? Yeah. He's yeah. an American Gladiator. He is? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, it's funny. We should have written them down, but every time like one of the like <laughs> really muscly goons came up, like we would come up with like a new amazing name. And like uh, I had discount Matrix guy, okay, because all he did was we, he just wore a leather duster and sunglasses, and but he was wearing khakis, and I'm like that doesn't really make sense. And then and then yeah, blazer, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, or or I called him you know uh, discount Fabio. Yeah, yeah. And, I don't know. We just like came up with all these funny names, and we should have written them and, down. And they're, they're all incredible. wearing leather pants. Why? Why? And they all had long it, hair. Because it looks cool. No, it doesn't look cool. Well, too, I mean, you'd think as an it assassin... It never looked cool. ...that you would, like, like think twice about the long hair because in an altercation or physical, like, fisticuffs, like, someone could just yank your hair and oh, use yeah. it against you. I mean, that yeah. seems like poor planning. Yeah. Well, guys, as, he, as Brian pointed out, he was discount Fabio, like... Could you imagine, like, hey, we need to get out the door because we need to, we're terrorists, we need to take over this building. Hold on, guys, I almost cut my hair just right. <laughs> <laughs> He's been in the bathroom for three hours. It's true. Well, I mean, to hair that long takes a long yeah. time to dry. Guys, I don't even think he's working on his hair. I think he's beat one out in the sink because his beeper went off. And he couldn't a give his lady a baby. So Having a fap. So, so the reason why they're going to this Zytec building is because the terrorists need to get four devices to make the thing that they stole in the first five minutes work. Right. Okay? Yeah. Again, we don't know what this does. This could do nothing. This could it be... It could steal all the world's life. It, it could. All the money in the world. It yes. could blow the world No one knows. Up. No one fucking There's knows. There's absolutely no, no sense of the end game But here. you just know that you need. they need to steal all four. Okay? It's mm-hmm. kind of like, you know, uh, the golden tickets in Willy Wonka. Okay? That's exactly it's what like this is. It's like the Horcruxes and yeah. Uh, yeah. Harry Potter. Oh, dude. How about when we were watching the movie, <laughs> the scene came up and John was like, that's not what C4 looks like. And I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, the pink, pink and bug? I was like, uh, and I was like, wait, what? How do you know what C4 looks How like? How the fuck do you know that? It okay. was awesome. He was like, I had a so copy certain. of the Anarchist Cookbook, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, that's yeah. not what that looks like. And I was like, yeah. huh? Yeah. So so what ends up happening is uh, the goons basically shoot and kill almost everybody in this, you know, 86-story uh, skyscraper. There's only like 20 people in the building. Brian, let me stop you there. Okay. Th- this- I'm sorry. I'm trying to get the plot here. <laughs> well, I have a very serious <laughs> question There's about so this much movie. to unpack here, guys. Why were they in the skyscraper at all? Yes. No idea. Because the movie's called Skyscraper. Yeah. Like, in the movie, they are clearly ripping the fuck off and die hard. There's a safe full of money. Yeah, there was, no- why there was nothing in there. The terrorists are yeah. in the building. Well, I, get, I guess the reason why is because the fourth device was in the building. They needed that fourth device. It was in the building, and that's when all hell broke loose. It was crazy. Because uh, Carrie steals the fourth device, and she hides it in a laundry basket. Okay, so that's the whole thing. And that's when it becomes basically like Die Hard. Guys, you know, instead of detonators, it's yeah. the device. Skyscraper <laughs> filmmakers. C- come with me for a second. Okay. I'm just going yeah. to take you aside. You're going to take us quick. over to the side. Yeah, guys, okay. I need to have a chat. With okay. Real quick. Okay. This is going to be for John. Right. the All reason. Right. Guys, the reason, by the way, nice jacket um, that they had to take over the entire building in Die Hard was that there was a lot of money and gold and things that you couldn't just easily grab and run the fuck away with. When it's one briefcase that looks like it weighs nothing, you don't need to have a giant year plan for a multi-terroristic takeover of a building that will cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars in the training and the weaponry that you need. You could just grab the thing and fucking run. You don't have. If you're gonna copy Die Hard, know what you're fucking copying. Oh, and um, make sure you uh validate your parking on the way out. Okay. That's kind of excuse guy. me, excuse me, John. May, oh, may, yeah. may I interrupt? Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. okay. Yes, this. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm. I know that you were here with the skyscraper filmmakers. Uh-huh. Um, but but I like to say, um, they're not that bright. <laughs> Don't listen to them, guys. <laughs> <laughs> they needed a plot. They stole from Die Hard. Well, the and game is, over. That's it. I mean, this. Well, this is also because they're bad filmmakers. But they, I imagine, they try to copy like why the terrorists were attacking, like in Die Hard. But 
that's because it was a kind of a mystery and Die Hard was a brilliant script and we found out that Hans Gruber and his gang were just a bunch of like petty thieves. Yeah. Um, these guys really were out for like to change the world with a global weapon. So well, not knowing anything about them is just bad the screenwriting. Thing too, the thing too is is if, and this is jumping ahead, but you you find out these terrorists actually aren't that bad. Like they say that they're the the people's democratic, uh, you know. Uh, I thought that something. was going to cover, but well, apparently they are. No, like but they're just they're just like group. there's like we support freedom for all people. And we dislike the government. It's like, oh, okay. That doesn't seem that bad. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and we're going to use this My, Atari minus, thingy. Yeah, minus, <laughs> minus the killing stuff. That's yeah. You support freedom. Oh, okay. That's cool. Um, when it, I was a kid, my parents had a big VHS camcorder, and it was in a case that looked like that. Oh, yeah. And it, when they opened it up, I was like, oh, is it Christmas morning? My folks going to start <laughs> filming me opening my uh, yeah. Sega Genesis game? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I'm going to try to get through this plot really quickly. <laughs> so all these shenanigans ensue. Basically, every one of the goons tries to, to kill Carrie because she hid the, the weapons. Not the weapon, but the, the fourth device. And... You know, there's a lot to unpack here. Uh, we get some flashbacks to some sexy time. Okay, that's uh, uh, you know uh, out, of nowhere, out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, some enjoyable. sexy time. Um, and and this is this is a blown opportunity because all of a sudden she knows karate. Yes, it never explained. Mm-hmm. It, it's never set up, and they go to a flashback scene where they show that she's really good at firing a gun, which she does a couple of times in the movie, but it's from point blank range where you really couldn't miss. <laughs> Although there are guys chasing other guys down a hallway with a machine gun and they can't hit them. Um, but that's besides the point. Maybe he should have been teaching her how to fight and then she like does like a mm-hmm. roundhouse kick and takes him down. She's like, oh, I had four brothers. I know how to take care of myself. I'm Help from Texas. Maybe just one line. She could have just had one line. And I'm it from Texas. It. Yeah. We know how to kick ass. You know. Right. To- <laughs> totally. I mean, that it wouldn't have had to be much. No. no. But just to explain it a little bit. So um, she... Basically, lights fires in waste bins to try to confuse. Very, very small Con- controlled fires. Yeah, very small fires. A, she's, she's trying you know, to start a bonfire. To, to confuse <laughs> the cameras, because I guess, like, all the cameras and systems, because that Jacques fucker, that, that French guy, he's, like, at the master control and can see everything. He's like, oh, yes, there's a fire confusing that stuff. There's a fire. There's a Get fire. It out. Yeah, so all this Stop shit happens, you. and honestly, like, I... It was a very boring movie, honestly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, for, so while this is all happening. It really was. I was actually quite surprised at how an action movie could be this boring. Exactly. It was but bad. The, the husband somehow uh, makes it to the Zytec building. And by the way, the building's on lockdown. Okay. Right. But he just gets in the room. But he somehow gets in. Okay. And they have hostages. And like, they have hostages. Well, and there are people in the building that they haven't even locked down yet. Just tell them to go to the fucking roof. Yeah. Just, but... And they haven't laced it like Hans and Die Hard. <laughs> Why'd you blow the roof, Hans? Why'd you do it, Hans? <laughs> yeah. So what we end up getting is uh, the the next kind of weird sex scene, which is the the kind of rapey. Oh, it's scene. A, it's full out rape. Because yeah. they well, capture they capture Carrie, and they're like, "Oh, leather pants, you go and have fun with her," and and he ends up raping her. And like Chad Thudme. So Chad Thudme. So many. Well, because like too, like then I felt bad about joking about this character because this was such a a bizarre scene, you know. Um, Between rape, Anna and Chris Balkwood. yeah, rape rape scenes are just upsetting anyway. But it was it was again, you know, it wasn't graphic, which thank goodness, but it was like explicitly done. It just didn't seem right because he bends her over like a desk or whatever, and like it seems like she's pretending to enjoy it. And it's that thing where, like, yeah, he's raping her, but then she gets revenge and kills him, so it's okay. Like, it's almost like they justified yeah. it that way to make it more palatable, which that's never okay, and, like, that's never a thing. Well, the sickening thing of that scene is it's just an excuse to get her tits in the movie again. Oh, yeah. But you don't want to do that through rape. Yeah. No, because, like, how... Fuck? Because, I mean, if, you, if you're going to put her boobs out... You want it to be titillating, and like I would hope that most men would be uncomfortable watching this. Scene. I was uncomfortable watching that. Like yeah. I was like, Ugh, "Is this necessary?" Agreed. Like I get, like it would be better if like she he like grabbed at her and she just like grabbed the knife and stuck it in his head or something like that. 
You know, like maybe one tit popped out, but she got one in his head. Right. You know, like that would have. Well, yeah. If they were just fine. fighting and her titty and fell out. Just, yeah. Whoopsie. <laughs> no, but that's what I mean. Is is like maybe he's grabbing at her and he she takes the pen knife and just stabs it in his brain. That would have been better. He didn't have to have the whole, oh, he's going to rape her, and she's going to just sit there and act like she enjoys it, but then grab the knife. No. Everything about it was, it was wrong. Really, it made me really, really uncomfortable. uncomfortable to watch. So, uh, yeah, she shoots him, and he falls out of the window. Um, by this time, the cops and fire truck, which I'm like, why is a fire truck there, um, show they up. they could rent one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and what was funny, well, I love this part. This movie spared no expense when it came to lighting people on fucking fire. Yeah, yeah that's where they spent most of their budget. Didn't I say that, John, when we were watching it? I was like, yeah. this is where the budget has gone. It's gone to lighting people on fire. Yeah, yeah right. And stunt doubles to throw out of a building. <laughs> okay. It's uh, true. So eventually, um, I guess uh, Jacques, well, well, Fairfax gets that, la- that last device thing and takes the kid hostage and... Uh, you know, it's just all sorts of crazy shit happens. And the, you know, he gets, doesn't he get shot or something? I'm yeah. losing track of how this movie is. Like, this movie's terrible. It's so bad. Yeah. Well, she she dispatches that guy, and then, yeah, she every other guy gets shot, and then it's just her and the main bad guy, Fairfax, at the end. Well, after yeah. she saves all the... Well, she kicks the, his um, ass, doesn't he? Yes. Yeah. Well, after she saves all the hostages... That they almost even forgot about. There's still people in the building. Gathers them up uh, real quickly. Yeah. But yeah, she... Um, she Oh, well, she doesn't shoot him. She kicks his ass and he yeah. falls off the building. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, and we guys were figuring the little kid with the puppy. <laughs> they just doubled down. Well, what? He had, what? like, a puppy, too. Like, there was a little kid First in of it. All, that little kid is probably, like, what? Maybe 10? 8? Maybe he's on his trike. Yeah. Okay, he's gonna be eight. Right? Maybe he's oh, eight or something, Lord. and he's just like driving around the entire movie in that fucking you know big wheel. You don't think he would stop and say, eh, "Wonder what that noise was? Bullets, mm-hmm. you know, the screams, the blood. Well, look yeah. at the blood." <laughs> and this right? is the end of every one of those movies because Han. You know, I'm sorry, but Die Hard oh, started it all. <laughs> Hans Gruber had John McClane's wife, you yeah. know, had mm-hmm. Holly, and then you look at Sudden Death, which is Die Hard in a Hockey Arena. Yes. They Go grabbed Sean claude Van Damme's kid, yes. you know, and then in Skyscraper, it's, oh, uh, I have your not-child who was somehow riding this tricycle around where all these guns are going off and people are being set on fire and <laughs> windows are exploding, but this kid was just like... The bridge is falling and I don't give a shit. Silver I shamrock. Don't give a shit. Silver <laughs> shamrock. Uh, yeah, wow. he apparently missed all of this. Yeah. But yeah, he's like, oh, I'm going to kill this kid because I got nothing left. She's like, you know, I'll give you the briefcase or whatever if you um, don't, kill, don't the kid. kill the kid. Yeah. Yeah. And then she kicks his ass. Yeah. And he dies. He falls off the building. Yeah. And they That's all live true. happily ever after in an ambulance. True. Yeah. He, at least, unlike Die Hard, that's like, the movie. please get in the ambulance because you're all horribly injured. Yeah, that's true. I mean. Yeah, and at the very end, she's like, see, and he thinks I can't have a bite. It's like, what, <laughs> you, what, what about murdering people, murdering terrorists make you able to, is it because you said, hey, don't throw that child off the building. I'll give you your bomb. Does that make you a mom? Does that make you a fit parent? Because I feel like that's oh, just God. the basics of humanity. Yeah, got and guys, basically that's it. That's the movie. <laughs> that's that literally is the whole fucking now, movie. Again, now it the was rocks so boring. Yeah, the rocks one is getting bad reviews, but it has to be by default better than this. You yeah. would think. I mean, you uh, would think. I mean, the the problem is, and I've seen this from a couple reviews of this movie. It's just boring. Mm-hmm. Like, it's an action movie that's slow. It has so much terrible dialogue, and things don't make any sense. And really, it's just there. It's It, it literally is porno quality acting and story with actual porn in it. There, there's a point where I had to pause the film, um, and Elaine looked le- le- legitimately embarrassed for Anna. I was just laughing my ass off. When she runs into somebody in the movie, I think it might it might have been friend of the show uh, Gary Imhoff. Oh, uh, uh, where and he's like, "Where? What happened to you?" And her delivery is, 
People are trying to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> how many takes? Do they how just, many takes? How many takes? How many takes did that take? Like, Nailed it. Uh, that's it, yeah. you know what it was. It was called we 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 got to move to yeah. the next shot. And that's the thing. Like <laughs> there, this is an exploitation movie made to make as much money off of big boobs as in her fame as, as quickly as possible. Yeah. So you get people that just don't care. Like in in the simplest of sense, like. Every shot was perfectly lit. There was nothing dynamic. You know, it was competent, at least. Like, everything was exposed. But none of the shots are interesting. None of the lighting is interesting. They didn't care if the acting sucked. I will say the stunts were good. Yeah. The stunts were good. Yeah, I mean, the stunts like they, were not bad. They did good They let people on fire. fire have fun like, with Yeah, that. I mean, that yeah. seemed fairly competent. Tits, stunts, and gore. If you have that, you got yourself the ability to sell a movie. That's, I mean, it's that's, true. it worked. I mean, like. It's Got a thing. Distribution. Yeah. When, you, when you don't care about pacing or any kind of style, yeah, you get a boring action movie. Yeah. And that's that's what we got. I mean... I can't believe how boring I would, it was, guys. Don't, don't get me wrong. I would highly recommend this movie. It is hysterically funny. But watch it with friends and watch it drunk or high. I think that's pretty much the mantra for all of our Pantheon of Other Shit movies. There's been some that we've watched where we're like, eh, that wasn't terrible. Or, oh, God, never watch that. Yeah. Like, Thunderpants wasn't bad enough. Thunderpants is debatable that it belongs in the pantheon of utter shit. After you get over the fart jokes, like, after about 15 minutes, and, like, you're like, okay, I these farts are, I'm almost numb to them now. Thunderpants serves no other yeah. fer- focus than pantheon. It is certainly a pantheon. Oh. Though, like, I don't know, your kids mm. thought it was funny, though, didn't they? They thought it was like, funny. We haven't, okay. we haven't done this for the show yet, but, like, Manos, Hands of Fate, I really suggest that nobody ever watch that, ever. That's a terrible movie. It, it just isn't fun. It like, might it be, it, you know, we always say this, but it might be the worst movie ever made, but it's not enjoyable. It hurts. This movie is fucking enjoyable. <laughs> it's yeah. so dumb. I, Again, but I, as I said, with friends. Y- yeah. Yes, you have to do it with friends. I mean, when we saw it, we didn't see it with, with all three of us there. It was really just kind of a one-on-one. So it probably was less enjoyable for us than if it was, say, our listeners who want to watch it with a group of friends on a Friday night with a bunch of beer. That's the key thing here, too, folks. Mm-hmm. You have to be drinking to watch this. Or if you don't drink, you know, just get yourself like a nice <sighs> snack. Yeah, that works, too. Yeah, so, I mean, definitely check it out. It's it's on Amazon, um, you know, if you have it's Prime. It's on Prime, yeah, that's, yeah. that's how I watch it. So it's it. free. So yeah, if you're like, hey, you want to like you want to watch a movie, babe? Yeah, but I don't, don't want to watch anything too serious. We we'll want something dumb. <laughs> put it on skyscraper. Yeah, yeah, free is the price you should pay for this movie. Just so you know. That's, that's and if much you it. grew up as a young boy in the '90s, even if you are disgusted by the sight of her now, you'll get a nostalgia boner. You'll be like, that's true. Oh, my penis remembers. <laughs> my Whoa. penis remembers. <laughs> John. It's like it's like a dog who like when you move across country but you couldn't take the dog and the dog goes across country like never forgets you that that that's your penis like when it comes to Anna Nicole it's like riding a bike but with boobs Bro you're never going to work for Disney you're talking about a wow. dead woman's boobies Wow <laughs> Hey you know if you open that casket though those boobs oh, are the only thing they're man. still there Disney that's will never horrible. have you <laughs> It, it hurts a, because it's, it's true. Some, some bones and gel pads. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> hurts me. That is so horrible. It so, hurts me. Oh, that, I think that's uh, that. That's closes out skyscraper. Uh, Lane, where can they find you at on the Twitter? You can find me on Twitter at la underscore croft. John, if skyscraper is your favorite film of all time, please let me know at the Unreal J Wolves. <laughs> You can find me at Brian Kai Thomas on the Psycho Show page. Be sure to like us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google Plus at Psycho Show. You can also find us on the Epicast Network at EpicastNetwork.com. If you have a favorite movie or question you want to throw our way, you want to talk to us about your experiences with Anne Nicole Smith's boobs and <laughs> the movie Skyscraper, <laughs> you can contact us at CinemaPsychoShow.com. And make sure to subscribe to us on iTunes and Apple Podcasts. Send us a rate, send us a review. We love getting those. And catch a new episode available every other Sunday. All that she wants is another baby. She's gone tomorrow.